Hello, and welcome back to our Scrum Study course on a guide to the Scrum Body of Knowledge. We're in Module 7 and have just finished a session about the Create Prioritize Product Backlog process. In this module, we're going to learn about the Conduct Release Planning process. The inputs to this process are Scrum Core Team as described in Section 8.4.1.1 Stakeholders, as described in Section 8.2.3.2. Project Vision Statement, described in Section 8.1.3.2. Prioritize Product Backlog, as described in Section 8.5.3.1. Done Criteria, as described in Section 8.5.3.2. The first tool used in this process is Release Planning Session. Release Planning Session Release planning sessions are conducted to develop a release plan. The plan defines when various sets of usable functionality or products will be delivered to the customer. In Scrum, the major objective of a release planning meeting is to enable the Scrum team to have an overview of the release and delivery schedule for the product they are developing so that they can align with the expectations of the product owner and relevant stakeholders, primarily the project sponsor. Since Scrum Framework promotes information-based iterative decision-making over the detailed upfront planning practice in traditional waterfall-style project management, release planning sessions need not produce a detailed release plan for the entire project. The release plan can be updated continually as relevant information is available. The second tool used in this process is release prioritization methods. Release prioritization methods are used to develop a release plan. These methods are industry and organization specific and are usually determined by the organization's senior management. One output of the conduct release planning process is the release planning schedule. A release planning schedule is one of the key outputs of this process. A release planning schedule states which deliverables are to be released to the customers along with planned intervals and dates for releases. There may not be a release scheduled at the end of every sprint iteration. At times, a release may be planned after a group of sprint iterations are completed. Another output of this process is the length of sprint. Based on the various inputs including business requirements and release planning schedule, the product owner and the scrum team decide on the length of sprint for the project. Once determined, the length of sprint often remains the same throughout the project. A sprint could be time boxed from one to six weeks. However, to get a maximum benefit from a Scrum project, it is always recommended to keep the sprint time boxed to four weeks. On projects with very stable requirements, sprints can be extended up to six weeks. This brings us to the end of our session on Module 7, which dealt with the conduct release planning process. With this, we also end the chapter on the initiate phase. I look forward to seeing you in our next session on the plan and estimate phase. Until then, goodbye, and thank you for learning with us.